Your HVAC air filters are probably the most important thing in the whole system. And unfortunately, as an HVAC contractor, I've seen that this is probably the most overlooked thing on your HVAC system. So in this video, we're gonna share the top five questions that I see all the time. So let's get right into it. Number one is what direction does my air filter go inside my furnace? The simplest answer to that question is make sure that the arrow is pointed toward your furnace. So if your filter sits right by your furnace, like a lot of systems, just make sure that filter is pointed toward the furnace or toward the nameplate on your furnace. Now, if your filter is not at the furnace, maybe it's in a wall grate where you have to open it and put the filter in, just make sure that your filter arrow is pointed in towards the wall. And similarly, if it's mounted in the ceiling, make sure that that arrow is pointed up. That is the simplest way I can share which way this arrow goes on your air filter. Now, if you do put this in the wrong way, it's not going to grenade your system, but it is going to make your furnace have to work harder to pull that air through. If you look at this closer, you'll notice that the filtered side is more porous than the other side. And so not only is it going to create more strain, but it's not going to do as good of a job filtering the air. And that's the most important thing. Question number two that I get asked all the time is how often should I change my air filter? Now this is highly dependent on your household circumstances. Do you have a pet? Do you have multiple pets? Do you have asthma or breathing problems? This all has a play in how often you need to change that air filter. So the simplest way to make this determination is to physically go and look at your filter after certain time frames. So after one month, check the filter. I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a second. If it looks fine, leave it in for another month. Check it. If it looks fine, leave it for another month. So don't make this assumption based on what people say, like three months or six months. You need to physically look at it and see how well it's doing for your particular application. All right, so the way that we can check this filter to physically see if it needs to be replaced is if we look, see how you can see the light through? Um, this is a brand new, perfectly clean filter. You can see that light shining through. Now, the interesting part is this filter is six months old. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty dirty. Um, so if we shine this up, you cannot see anything this way, but if we flip this around, you can see light this way. Um, this is the filtered side, so we could technically run this a little bit longer. If you can see light through there, then this can still continue to be used and be filtered. Uh, the funny part is, even though this is really dirty, um, we were still getting perfectly good airflow. So. A four inch filter can look pretty dirty, but can still function pretty well. But that's a good way to put your eyes on it instead of just replacing it. And you could have had more life out of that filter. Now, the second thing that plays a part in this is how thick is your air filter? A lot of homes that I see have a one inch filter. If you have multiple pets, you have asthma, you probably want to change that filter out closer to once a month. Now that's a huge advantage to upgrading to a four inch filter. I have a separate dedicated video that walks you through how to convert your system from a one inch filter to a four inch filter. And these ones, uh, we have a pet, we don't really have asthma or anything, but we noticed that you can run these filters for a lot longer because if you were to expand all of this material, this filter would probably be 12 feet long. Um, when you think about how much surface area this actually has. In comparison to a one inch filter, you have less surface area and that's going to get dirty quicker. Now, another thing that you can do is listen and see if you hear any whistling coming from your air filter. If your air filter is really dirty and it's time to replace it, what'll happen is the media will get clogged and that air will look for other ways to find air to get into the furnace and so it'll pull it through the sides and it'll create a little whistling noise. So that's another thing you can check for if you think your filter needs to be replaced. Now, as you probably noticed, I choose to get all of my filters from FilterBuy. 
They have extremely low pricing when you purchase filters in bulk, meaning you don't have to go to the store when your system is freezing up or your heat is not working because the filter is so dirty. These get shipped directly to your doorstep and they're made in the USA, which is pretty cool as well. Another great thing is that you can save even more money by setting up a subscription plan. So you can set it to where they send you filters every six months, once a year, and you don't have to worry about going anywhere and you can save money. So if you wanna make your life easier, check out FilterBuy and get all your filters there. You can find them in the video description. Use my specific link to get some additional money off of your purchase. Question number three has to do with the MERV rating. What is that rating and what does it do? What MERV rating should I have in my home? Now, a general rule of thumb with MERV ratings is anywhere from eight to 11 is what I typically recommend for a regular residential home. Anything above 11 is technically considered a hospital grade and it's really not necessary unless you have those special conditions. Now I have a separate dedicated video just for that particular topic in determining what MERV rating is good for you. And again, that's based on your health situation and your surroundings. Do you have animals? Do you have asthma? Are you a smoker? Does Are you trying to get smoke out of the home? Things of that nature. In my particular home, I run a MERV 11, but anything in that eight to 11 range is gonna be cost effective and you're still gonna get good filtration. Question number four is I've replaced the air filter and I'm still having problems with my air conditioner. Now what's equally as important as having a clean air filter is having a clean evaporator coil. Now I also have a separate dedicated video on how to check and clean your evaporator coil. But basically to simplify it, you have your air filter and then right after your air filter, you have your blower that pushes the air up and then you have your evaporator coil. Now that evaporator coil gets really cold in the summer months and that air going through that evaporator coil is what gives you cool air. Now if that evaporator coil gets clogged with dirt and stuff from not having a good sealed air filter, you could still have problems even if you put a new air filter in the system. I see that all the time. Now the interesting part about it is even though the evaporator coil is used for air conditioning, that hot air in the winter time has to go through that evaporator coil all through your heating season. And so if you have a clogged evaporator coil, that can mess with your cooling and your heating as well. So I highly recommend if you have an older system, checking that evaporator coil at the least and just putting your eyes on it to see if it's dirty or if it's perfectly fine. Now, something that I saw with my home and many homes that I visit is that the air filter is not actually sealing. And so air is able to escape through the filter or past the filter, I should say, and clog that evaporator coil. So even though I was replacing my air filter every three months, my evaporator coil, as you probably saw in that video, was absolutely horrendous. Now, as soon as I made the transition to a nice four inch filter rack and new filter, I have run that system for six months and I checked the evaporator coil, it was spotless. And so it's really important to have a sealed filter in addition to making sure that you change it on time. Question number five is what happens if I don't change the filter as often as I should? So the two biggest things that happen when you don't change your air filter often enough is in the cooling season, you will have ice buildup. So that evaporator coil will not have enough air moving past it and the air doesn't pick up that cooling because it just can't go through that evaporator coil. And what ends up happening is that evaporator coil turns into a block of ice and then you have zero airflow. Now that's very common in the summer months. I see that so often. Now in the winter months, if you have a dirty air filter, what you could end up having is overheating problems. So the same thing, the air has to go through the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger gets hot and that air going through it is how you get heating. And if the heat exchanger doesn't have enough air moving across it, it's going to overheat, it's going to turn off and it's going to throw an error code. Meaning you have to call somebody and pay money to have it fixed. And it could be as simple as replacing your air filter. Now, in addition to that, as we discussed earlier, if that air is trying to escape past the filter because it can't go through that media of the filter, that dust is going to end up in your blower wheel, in your blower motor, in your evaporator coil, on your heat exchanger, 
and it's going to significantly lower the lifespan of your system. So it's extremely crucial that you have a good sealed filter and that you change it often. Well guys, those are the top five questions. I hope you learned something from this video. If so, please take just a second and leave this video a like. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now, if you're interested in upgrading your system from a one inch filter to a four inch filter like mine, check out this video right here and we walk you through that whole process from start to finish. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.